Good evening and welcome to St. Stephen's on this Good Friday evening. We are going to begin our worship. It will be the experiential stations of the cross. So as you have seen, um, if you have been on for a few minutes, to have a few items with you if you choose to participate. If you have two pieces of paper, a pen or a pencil, a candle and something to light it with, uh, and a dish of water and perhaps a towel. And again, it is your choosing if you would like to participate. Otherwise, just bring your spirit of meditation during this evening. Let us begin. As we begin the journey, let us pray. Lord Jesus, help, help us walk, walk in, in your steps. steps. Let the same mind be in us that was in Christ Jesus, who emptied himself to be born in human likeness, humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even on a cross. Lord Jesus, Jesus help, help us, us walk, walk in, in your steps. steps. God highly exalted him so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Lord Jesus, help us walk in your steps. God of power and mercy and love, you sent your son that we might be cleansed of sin and live with you forever. Bless us as we gather to reflect on his suffering and death that we may learn from his example. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, help, help us, us walk in your steps. steps. We ask this through that same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Forgiving Christ, when the world condemns us, when wrong is done to us, or when we carry the weight of things that are too much to forgive, Come along aside us in the shadows and give us the grace to be forgiven and forgiving. Amen. A reading from Matthew. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. or to think about the act of hand washing, not as an act of dismissal, but as an act of repentance and cleansing as you begin your journey to the cross. Let us pray. Gracious God, forgive us for the times when we have washed our hands like Pilate, working to make ourselves look good to the outside but neglecting the needs of others. Forgive us for our silence in the face of evil and give us the courage to speak and act to your glory. 
Reveal your heart to us and strengthen us to see your face and the faces of those around us. Give us clean hearts and renew our spirits. Draw us to you, filling us with the joy of your salvation. Amen. A reading from Luke. The Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then he said to them all, If any want to be my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their crosses daily and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will save it. In this time, I would invite you to take one of those pieces of paper that you have, perhaps with you, and draw a simple cross, as you may see on the screen, something like that. Just draw a cross that fills the page. And as you do that, ask, is it hard for you to take up your cross? What things make it hard for you to follow Jesus? Have you been carrying your cross a long time, or are you just beginning? Talk to Jesus about following. Talk to Jesus from where you are. A reading from Matthew. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me and welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. What is weighing you down right now? What burdens do you carry? What is heavy in your life? Talk to Jesus about what you carry. Is there a sin weighing you down that you can give to Jesus? At this time, write these burdens down, these heavy things, and put them on your cross and allow Jesus to carry them with you.
from Luke. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be oppo opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. What is in your heart today as you approach the cross and the crucifixion? What things are in your heart? Good things that bring you joy? Not so great things that bring you pain? Has your heart been broken in any way this year? Has anyone in your life caused you pain? Give this pain to Jesus to carry to the cross. Talk to God about what is on your heart today. Write the things that have broken your heart or in your heart that you have drawn.
as we reflect on Station 5. Who has helped you carry your cross? Who are the people in your life who helped you make it through those tough times? The people who help you through pain and or the stuff that makes you sad, crazy, anxious. Place your hand on your cross Thank God for these people. Pray for them. And on your cross, list one or two names you might send a thank you card, email, or Facebook message to. Just a closer walk with me. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as you walk. Let me walk close to thee. Through this world of toils and snares, Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. A reading from Galatians. My friends, if anyone is detected in a transgression, you who have received the Spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourselves are not tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if those who are nothing think they are something, they deceive themselves. Whose burden are you carrying today? Who are you helping to follow God? Talk to God. Pray for these people now.
write their names on your cross and light a candle in remembrance of them. A reading from Luke, a great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us and to the hills cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? The loss of anyone or anything. At this time, take some moments and write your losses on the cross.
Consider the cross and its heaviness. Consider the weight as you have seen these images. Pray for these people and these places where there is such suffering in this world. Place your hand on your cross. Imagine its weight. Now place the heavy burdens, injustice, poverty, disease, hunger, and put them on the cross. A reading from John. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carried the cross by himself. He went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side with Jesus between them. In the Roman Empire of the first century, only Caesar was Lord. Only Caesar could bring peace, peace through victory. And victory came at a, a price of violence, war, always a show of brutal strength. Only Caesar could give titles and crowns the state had a monopoly on violence of all kinds. Yet this Jewish peasant of Nazareth, Jesus, is given a title by the God of Israel as beloved son. His mission is to bring God's beloved community to all the people by teaching them and showing them God's vision for a beautiful world. Not as a dictator or even a law enforcer, not one who despises those who are not righteous, less than pure, holy, and devout. So Jesus walks the countrysides and neighborhoods, reaching, crossing over borders and social boundaries and ignoring limitations of who was considered worthy of love. Jesus brings compassion and love to everyone. The nooks and crannies of society often forgotten and bypassed. To those labeled sinner, he shares companionship. For those who are sick, healing. To those poor, food. For those scorned, blessing. Jesus shows God not on a throne high up in the heavens, but God stooped down and washing the feet of his disciples. God's peace comes through justice not victory. Therefore, as Jesus' fate has been determined by fleeing followers, disappointed crowds who turn to violence, and the collaboration of the temple establishment and Roman authorities, Jesus stays true to his message still. He will not turn away from love, even if it means suffering. He will not turn away, even if it means death. Still, many mock him in the face of death, taunt him with titles that Caesar did not authorize, and a crown made out of thorns meant for ridicule and spite. And yet the real irony is when powerful love goes head to head with power and violence, with a refusal of retribution, continuing to reveal God's compassionate heart. This brings real pain. This brings suffering. I can't breathe is a real outcome. 
the beloved Son of God wearing a crown of thorns is fitting. You see, the hypocrisies of the world are real and often devoid of mercy. It begs the question to us today, is this the only way for governments and religious systems to keep order and peace through threats, violence, shame, death for those who do not comply? Is true power limited to brutal force or can mercy have its day? Is peace found only as an outcome of Caesar's victory, or can justice be for all, not just a few? What motivates us, fear or love? God is revealed in the crucified Jesus, who is giving and forgiving to his very last breath. Somehow, there is no other way to show us the truth of what we are like. And if God is like this, and we are like this, everything must change. As theologian, mystic, and priest Richard Rohr says, the mystery of the cross teaches us how to stand against hate without becoming hate, how to oppose evil without becoming evil ourselves. We find ourselves stretching in both directions towards God's goodness and also toward the recognition of our own complicity in evil. And it's in that moment we feel crucified. We hang in between. Without resolution, our very life, a paradox held in hope of God. Amen. At this time, I would invite you consider the burdens that you are carrying. Write your burdens on your cross and give them to Jesus. Crucified my Lord 
reading from Matthew. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema samachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, truly this man was God's son. At this time, I would invite you to take that second piece of paper, if you have it with you, and rip the piece of paper in half. You are not separated from God by any veil or any object or anything. reading from Mark. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth and taking the body down, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. At this time, I would invite you to take the cross that you have and fold it into half and then fold it in half again until it is a size that could fit in your pocket or your purse. And if you have perfume or scented oil, you might consider adding a drop or small spritz to the paper before you fold it. Continue folding it 
until you have a package small enough to tuck again in your pocket or a place where you will remember. Between now and Easter, transfer this packet to a pocket and carry it with you. Take time to allow the paper and the fragrance and if you've used one, to remind you of Jesus' death and burial. For on Easter morning, after you've experienced the resurrection story, you are invited to tuck your paper inside a Bible to remind you of this pandemic worship experience. A reading from John. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Consider planting something, a seed, a plant, a garden, as a reminder that Jesus died to bring new life. Ask Jesus to plant new life in your heart, to grow something new in you as you wait for the resurrection of the body and the life to come.
As we reach the end of this journey and continue along our path, let us pray. Lord Jesus, help us walk in your steps. Lord Jesus, you bore the cross, suffered, died, and were laid in a tomb. May many thought it was the end. Not so. Mortal like us, you had to die and be buried among us. There is so much in us that needs to die and be buried. Be with us always as we live out our baptism and offer our lives in service. For this we pray to you, our Lord and Savior, now living and reigning forever and ever. Amen. garden stands the tree of wisdom whose leaves hold forth the healing of the nations tree of all knowledge tree of all compassion tree of all beauty says our Savior, there on its branches, see the scars of suffering, see there the tendrils of a human selfhood, feed on its life. not its own, nor tingled in its foliage. Our greed has starved it, our despite has choked it, yet look it lives, its grief has not destroyed. We glory in your cross, O Lord, and we praise your holy resurrection. For by your cross, joy has come into the world. May God be merciful and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. We glory in your cross, O Lord, and we praise your holy resurrection. For by your cross, joy has come into the world. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. May God give us blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. We glory in your cross, O Lord, and we praise your holy resurrection. For by your cross, joy comes into the world. <laughs> 